Hello, I'm Martin Lambeth, not an actor portraying Martin Lambeth. Uh, anyway, bear with me here. We've had to switch things up due to the newly imposed restrictions, and it's not quite how we were going to approach things, but we're doing our best at the last minute to pull this off. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Louisville Art Association for inviting me to be a judge. It's indeed an honor, and I'd like to extend a special note of congratulations to all the participating artists because I understand it uh, takes a lot of courage to put your creativity on display and open yourself up to scrutiny, so kudos to you for that. Uh, I thought I'd start with a little bit of background on myself. I made a living as an artist for over 40 years. I started painting in college. After I graduated from there, I went to a commercial art school for a couple years and studied graphic design. Upon completing that program, I freelanced for a few months doing cartooning and various design jobs until I found a job at an advertising agency where I worked for a year. I got a little fed up with the politics of the agency world and decided to strike out on my own. And I think I did pretty well. I had long-term relationships with an impressive list of clients and received awards and recognitions. So uh, the other thing uh, is midway through my career, I was an early adopter of the computer at a time when uh, my fellow peers and other people in the industry didn't think it was a professional tool. Uh, that led to starting a second company, which was a digital imaging service bureau that took computer files and rendered them for use for printers uh, to complete their process. And as it is often noted, things go full circle because I started painting again after 33 and a third years, which is some kind of record. And uh, as far as my art credentials, uh, I won't bore you with that, but you can go to my website and see my bio. It'll list uh, my training, my education, shows, awards, etc. And uh, I studied with several well-known artists, and some of them, a few of those I studied with for uh, some year-long programs. And my mentor in particular I studied, I'm still basically under her tutelage. Uh, so I think that coupled with my career experiences maybe qualifies me to consider myself a judge, but uh, I'm not special. I've had some uh, successes, but my opinions uh, shouldn't cause anybody any unhappiness. It, it's uh, hard to judge and reject someone's art while awarding someone else some art, but I remember the phrase on any given Sunday, uh, meaning that what I chose for this show my opinions might change a day from now, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. Another artist, another judge uh, might have entirely different uh, take on it. So don't take any of this personally. Uh, let's see, what else would I like to say? Uh, if you didn't receive an award, don't uh, think of it as a disapproval or an indictment of your art. And remember, it's only the opinion opinion of one person and conversely if you did receive a word uh, congratulations and enjoy the moment but please also remember it's only the opinion of one person so uh, with that said I believe that uh, completes my introduction and I'm going to step aside now turn off the camera and move on to the next phase thank you very much Award for Artistic Achievement. This award goes to Joe E. Smith for Bunch of Glimmer. Uh, I was drawn to this piece uh, because of the textures and the patterns. It, it just had a unique stylized approach to the subject matter. It's subdued, but there's a great color harmony in the background and a little bit of punch with the red and white to give it some accents. Uh, it's got an interesting use of textures, an appealing line quality about it. You, you got the thick to thin, it kind of breaks up there and disappears and comes back in. It has a nice graphic treatment execution. 
I would have liked to seen this one in person. Uh, uh, because it is a mixed media piece, I was kind of curious about the glimmers. I thought it might be interesting if those were actually in a fabric or something. But uh, overall, that's uh, the critique which led me to give this uh, an award of achievement. This Artistic Achievement Award goes to Janine Ewing Bellatire for her pastel painting titled Distant Red. Uh, I really like the division of space on this. Each shape is unique and different. There's small, medium, large. There's no two shapes that are alike. And uh, it's got a nice balance to it. Uh, each shape's different from the other shapes. It's well executed in terms of the pastel, uh, very deliberate, and uh, it's got a nice clean color, nice contrast, and good texture. And I like the complementary color pattern of the red green and the strong lighting pattern. So congratulations to Janine. The next uh, achievement award goes to Camilla Pratt for her painting entitled Beehive. Uh, this one, it just feels happy and bright. It just makes you uh, feel good. It's uh, something I would consider in the genre called primitive, which means that it's known for its simplicity, its sincerity, and its expressive power which I think covers all the qualities of this painting. Uh, there's a great job on the circles in the, the background. You can see there's a variety of them. They have a very nice arc to them. I don't know if she did a freehand, which is very impressive, or if she traced a plate. Uh, back in the old days, we used to use circle templates, but we didn't have any that big. So the other thing about those circle shapes is the pleasing quality in the negative space. There, there's a great variety in the negative space as well, which is very important. It really lends itself to uh, enhancing the background as opposed to having every negative space be identical or repeated systematically throughout. So uh, congratulations to Camilla. Our next Artistic Achievement Award goes to Dennis Dickerson for his digital painting called Cattail Morning. Uh, this just has a very effective mood. Uh, uh, I love the, the ghostly trees melting into the background and the softness of the sun peeking through the, the cloud, kind of burning th through the cloud. and. It's got great shapes and division of space. The eye moves around nicely. And uh, at first I was a little concerned about the, uh, the eye on this uh, bird. It reminded me of Blucifer, the, the sculpture out at the airport. But in uh, doing a little more research, that is actually how that bird's eye appears. It's called an eared grebe. And so that really changed my opinion of the piece uh, immediately upon knowing that. And I think it's got uh, really good eye movement. It, your eye moves around effortlessly, almost as the, the grebe does drifting in the calm water. So uh, congratulations to Dennis Dickerson.
Our next Artistic Achievement Award goes to Cami Rigorazzi for her mixed media collage titled The Joy of Authenticity. I knew this was going to probably get some uh, award in the show because every time I came across it, it just made me smile, made me feel happy. And it's uh, got a, a patchwork pattern of a lot of different shapes. And again, there's a variety of shapes and there's uh, a variety of shapes in the negative space as well. They all intertwine very nicely and create a, an effective dark light pattern, good eye movement throughout. And uh, it kind of makes me think of uh, lenticular printing which is uh, an image that when you shift the card that you're looking at, you would see one image and then you turn it another way and you see another image. So you kind of have that effect here where some people might not see the, the goofy face of the llama immediately, or that might be the first thing they see, but it kind of gives you two, two paintings in one and you can choose to look at whichever version of it you like, but it's just a happy painting and congratulations to Cami. This Artistic Achievement Award goes to Margot McGrew for her pastel painting entitled A Quiet Place. It's uh, a really inviting scene. It's just kind of feels like a lazy Saturday. It has a nice technique and what I like about it is the ethereal quality of the brushwork from the pastels. It just uh, feels nice and open and loose and uh, it gave a great feeling of serenity. So congratulations to Margo. This Artistic Achievement Award goes to Nanette Fazio for her sculpture, Rock Cut. Uh, this has great shapes. It's hard to get that, that random quality uh, without falling into a pattern of symmetry. We tend to want to have things organized and balancing out the irregularities into all the different uh, spaces so they're different uh, between the negative space and the positive space. and the that occurs within each individual piece, but it also occurs as a whole because you have your large, medium, and small pieces. And I could see that this uh, sculpture could be arranged in a multitude of uh, different positions and still hold up because of those qualities. Uh, it's got uh, very striking uh, finishes too. I, I love the, the kind of turquoise revealing and the copper working together, which kind of gives you a little bit of that uh, complementary color happening. And uh, I just think it's a, a fascinating piece. So congratulations to Nanette. This Artistic Achievement Award goes to Elena Hofrichter for her fiber piece called Courting Cranes. And I'm kind of holding off revealing it because what appealed to me was I found it very striking when it first popped up on my screen. So, wow. Uh, it's got very skilled handiwork here. I can't imagine how much time it took. It's very labor intensive. I, I would have liked to have seen this one in person because there's such a, a great uh, subtlety in the variety of colors happening throughout the larger shape of the orange. There's multiple different values of color within that. And the shapes are very appealing. Uh, 
the the balance of the shapes is great and I love the blue orange complementary colors and uh, hopefully sometime I can see it in the future in person but congratulations to Elena This Artistic Achievement Award goes to Connie Rule for her painting Sunset in Acapulco. This is a, a very strong painting in terms of the figure. I, I love the quality of light. It's very well executed in terms of the backlight. You can see it on the leg. You can see it on the, the forearm. As well as the reflective light. You can see it in the underarm area and coming up under the chest area. The uh, water is very well done. A nice variety of shapes and colors and gradations within the water. There is a, a couple things about this that I did have a, a little bit of an issue with that I'll discuss in the critique. But overall, this is a great painting and congratulations to Connie. This Artistic Achievement Award goes to Cindy Yaklich for her painting Blue Pot and Tangerines. Uh, this one just jumps off the screen. It's uh, got great realism, yet a very painterly quality. I, I love the lighting and the, the lost edges, the hidden edges, the reflective quality. It's got a real master, mastery in the painting and uh, I had one little issue with a drawing problem that I don't want to really get into right now, but I'll go through it in the critique, but it's a, a very nicely executed painting and congratulations to Cindy. The award for third place goes to Emery Rugen Duffin for her digital painting entitled Luminous Witch. Now, I've done both digital art and traditional painting, and I'll have to say I'm not a fan of digital art, but I need to say that because I had to overcome that personal bias because this piece was so well done, it was deserving of an award. It's got uh, great light, it's elegantly crafted, uh, both in drawing and application of the media. It's uh, wonderful precision and believable rendering on the, both the reflected light and the backlight. And for those reasons, I give the third place award to Emery. Congratulations. The second place award goes to Lance Duffin for his painting, The Kilt. I feel like I know this guy. He looks like a member of the Celtic rock band Angus Moore that are friends of mine. Uh, I know he's not in the band, but he does look like he could be in the mosh pit. I know this uh, is a self-portrait of Lance from the notes I saw. Uh, I, I like the format. It's got great brushwork and a lot of energy. Uh, just the right amount of information without being overly rendered. And uh, the figure is very solid in terms of the drawing. Uh, these calves look like a lot of those Highland guys calves that I see at the festivals. And uh, just the, the face is very well executed as well. Uh, it's got a nice job on the logo and rendering on the t-shirt. And uh, 
I think we should give a round of applause to Lance for his second place award on the painting the kilt. Now I'd like to present the Judges Award. I went back and forth on this between Judges Award and Best of Show, but because of a personal connection, I felt that it was deserving of the Judges Award. So that goes to Lydia Potoff for her pastel painting, The Long Ski Home. This piece had the wow factor for me. Every time I came across it as I shuffled through, it just popped and I, uh, Thought it stood out. It certainly is the color, uh, but it's more than color. I think uh, value plays a strong part in my decision because there's a lot of color happening within the shadow. You have this blue shadow, but if you look closely, you'll see pinks, purples, greens, but they don't overpower the blue shadow because of the value control. And uh, the shapes, they're nicely divided. It has great composition, great movement, and a pleasing balance in terms of the, the lighting system. Uh, there's a variety of colors. The, another aspect of the color was the vibrancy. It's cleanly mixed and cleanly applied. Striking composition, uh, close control of values, great balance, all factors which led me to give Lydia the Judges Award. Congratulations. This brings us to the final award, Best of Show, which goes to Kirk Fry, for his photograph, Iceland Beach. It's, it's just a stunning painting that really grabbed my attention the first time I saw it. It's got great movement, leads your eye around. It's got great shape, a great division of space in terms of larger, smaller. Uh, no shapes are identical. There's a, a nice uh, symmetry about it. You're, Eye moves around easily, it draws you in, it just looks like someplace you want to be. And uh, Best of Show Award goes to Kirk Fry. Congratulations. In closing, I'd like to say it was a great show. I want to thank the Louisville Art Association for having me as a judge. It's very much appreciated and uh, quite an honor. I'd like to congratulate all the award winners as well as everyone that participated in the show. And I'd like to say something a little bit about that. Uh, in a perfect world, your creative effort should be rewarded with praise and attention. And uh, in Ireland, this is known as the noble call. Uh, you're recognized for the endeavor, not the end product. Praise goes to the people that make an effort to create something, whether it's a piece of art, written word, story, song. Uh, it's not easy to put yourself out there to be judged, exposing yourself through your creative efforts. And... Uh, you should be recognized because you contributed to the flow of humanity through your generosity and courage, and you deserve accolades for that from the public. And when you've done so, that means that you've answered the noble call. Thank you very much.